We're here this afternoon with Troy Dayton of the Arcview Group, the CEO and probably the most influential and important person in cannabis. <laughs> well, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. We're, uh, we're, we're trying to figure out, is cannabis actually ready for prime time? Is it going to be something that uh, my aunt is going to find in her local drugstore soon? Or is she at least going to be able to get it for her arthritis and those kind of things in a reasonable way? Mm -hmm. Or are we still years and years away from that? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, well, I think there's no question that eventually, if we are, if things are moving in the same direction that they are currently, that eventually, pretty much everywhere in the world, cannabis will be legal, regulated, and available, uh, and people will be able to grow it at home just like they would almost any other plant. Right. Um, the path to getting there, I think, is going to have a lot of peaks and valleys as we see you know, currently today. Sure. Uh, but I do feel like we are at a phase change, at a tipping point, um, in the sense that uh, what's the big thing that's changed recently is talent. Oh, okay. Talent has shown up to the cannabis sector. Uh, and we're starting to see you know, a lot of top talent from a lot of wide-ranging industries finding their way to the cannabis sector. And that is one of those sort of canaries in the coal mine for what's about to happen. Because fundamentally, any new industry, while certainly you need the right conditions for it to succeed, right. what you need more than the right conditions is the right conditions to bring the right people. And when you have the right people, anything becomes possible. And that really starts to speed things up. And we're in a situation right now where both political parties, at least in the United States, have started to realize that this is a winning issue. Right. We've been telling them it's a winning issue for a while. They finally have caught on. And now I believe we may be in a situation where they're going to try and outbid each other on who can be more pro-cannabis, uh, <laughs> which is idea. a really wonderful thing. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. on the downside, though, you know, that it's really hurt us in the past that we aren't a more divisive issue, right? If you look at things like, um, like abortion, for example, right. you know, you have, you know, one party where there's, you know, it's 90-10 and the other party where it's 10-90, right. right? that becomes a great wedge issue. Right. Um, right. And so one party picks it up or the other side picks it up. For us, it's a lot more even. There's a few more liberals that support yeah, this right. issue, but not that much. And right. So that means it's never been a very good wedge issue. Right, right. Okay. But once it reaches a certain amount of support, and now even the majority of Republicans support adult right. use legalization, all of a sudden, that long base of support, you know, I think cannabis may be the one issue in America that's actually bringing people together these days. You know, I think you're right. And right, and your, your your point about the talent is so well taken. I've been on LinkedIn since it started, and I'm, I'm IT engineering professional yeah. kind of guy. I had probably close to a thousand connections before I started in the, in the cannabis thing. I've got nearly five thousand now. Oh yeah, and, so hot. And, and I have a number of people that have more than a thousand connections in common with. Yeah, all in the cannabis space, and they're all you know serious professional people. So you're absolutely right. People are getting into the space, and, and that's a that's an awesome thing to see. Yeah. So, what do you think is the next step on the on the national level? What do you think we're going to see there happen? Um, well, I think that you know, Trump coming out in favor of states' rights uh, is a real watershed. Yeah. Um, I mean, he did that on the campaign trail, but right. for him to do it actually in office, especially you know, swimming upstream with so many others in the Republicans, including Jeff Sessions, including. Uh, uh, Mike Pence, I mean, these are not people that are in favor of this, right? So he had to buck some, some inertia. Um, but I think that's powerful. Uh, and I think that there is now support from the top Democrat in, is, uh, is, is now in favor of it. Now you've got uh, people like John Boehner uh, coming out who are no, not in office anymore, but still have a lot of clout within the party. Um, I think there's a very reasonable chance that the States Act, which would essentially uh, say to the states in law as opposed to in a memo, uh, that it's okay for them to do what they want on cannabis, that could conceivably pass next year. Next year. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a more than, I'd say, I wouldn't say it's more than a 50% chance of passing next year. But I think we start getting into the, yes. the high majority likelihood of passing something similar like that by 2019. Uh, and I think, you know, just a few months ago, 
uh, anybody in the know would have said that anyone that as soon as they could imagine everything changing for real and federal prohibition ending would be probably 2021. Right. After right? we've got a new administration. Right. And then all this stuff happened in the last few months. And you know, when we think back over history, right. and you think about, you know, the 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 Berlin Wall falling, and you think about some of these big things that that, that have happened over over time, you know. The, oh, the opening up of trade to China, you know, I mean, these, these certain right. certain things that fall have happened. Of the Soviet Union. Fall of the Soviet yeah. Union. I mean, all of these sorts of things, they seemed impossible up until a few moments before they happened. Exactly. And so oh. we may be in a situation where not only are we on the way on down, but once the markets and once people catch on and they start rushing, right. it could all end very, very quickly. However, that's not guaranteed. Right. We've got to keep fighting and keep working and keep donating to the cause because until there is not a single adult in this world punished for this plant, we still need to fight. We still need to change the laws and not forget that this is a movement and not just an industry right. until we've won. I got to shake your hand on that one. All right, for sure. So when we've got states act and, and we've uh, and we've descheduled, now we're looking at something that almost looks like a, a regularized business, and we have interstate commerce. Two thirds of the business plans I know in this business are in real trouble if suddenly there's interstate commerce. What do you think? Is it going to be? A, a, a major force in the industry where there's going to be another shakeout or do you think they'll survive? Yeah. Um, consolidation is already underway uh, in this sector right. um, and that's even happening at in small states like Colorado, right? We're seeing a lot of consolidation as, as markets mature, as they get sure. more price competitive. Uh, you know, it just makes sense. The only way to then compete is through economies of scale. This is sort of just how it works, right? right? Um, that's, of course, going to happen even more so if there's uh, interstate commerce. However, uh, each state is going to have a very, very different regulatory structure. Right. And particularly in the states that have very limited licensing, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's somewhat of a pipe dream that you're going to see a lot of interstate commerce uh, in those states. Because if you've got 10 or 20 people that can get access to, to, to a license, right. they're going to hold on for dear life for, sure. for their markets. It's important right. to remember that we've only very recently had the right to sell wine and, and beer from one state to another, to order through mail order. Right. That's like right. a fairly recent thing. It happened in the last like seven years. Right. Okay. So, and alcohol prohibition ended a long time ago, right? right? So, um, I would, I would not, I would never underestimate the willingness of, of a, a small group of people who has a disproportionate benefit to try and hold on to that benefit as much as they can. Now, I think in the Western states, I think you'll see it a lot. It'll happen a lot easier, right? right? Because, uh, because it's a benefit, uh, and, and and they're structured a little looser. Um, and are much more interested in the end consumer and in competing with the illicit market. Right. Uh, right. And I think some of the eastern states and the states that have those limited licenses are going to be forced to reckon with the fact that their markets are unlikely to compete as well with the illicit market. And if the whole point of ending marijuana prohibition is to be able to re displace the illicit market, exactly. then we right. have to have enough free market to make that possible. Right. Right. In Northern California, the growers are they're hurting, right? I yeah. mean, at, at prices at twelve hundred and less a pound, and, and their costs are close to a yeah. thousand. There's not a lot there, and they and they're not even sure they're able to move it. So, up there, what they're looking is, boy, the day that it's interstate, we want you all to order our stuff, and they they expect to see their prices rise. So, for a lot of people in that area, that's a that, that's a key issue for them, and it looks yeah. like they're going to be. Yeah, you know, who knows? The next couple of years, it might actually happen. Yeah. Well, I think you know, ultimately, um, people are going to need to band together. They're going to have to be in larger facilities. Right. You know, it's important to remember that even the 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 most micro of micro brews that you love mm -hmm. is still 
grown and, 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 and brewed in you know a fairly decent sized industrial right. facility, yes. right? This, exactly. this isn't yeah. people's backyards. No, you know, yeah, and, and that's the other thing too, in the end of the day, you can grow your stuff at home. I don't know very many people that actually want to consume what they grow at home. Yeah. So it's a nice thing, you can do it. I have a few plants to sit out there. Sure. Yeah. yeah, well part of what I think is gonna drive people to the stores yeah. also is um, is the variety and the new product development and 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 um, brand loyalty is going to drive people uh, into the stores even if it's at a premium. And Absolutely. there's just some new data Absolutely. that just came out today that yeah. or a couple days ago that that, that 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 in fact is the case that people are willing to pay more if they can have more variety and have a better consumer experience. I know I am, and and I've already found myself limiting my you know okay I know this brand. Yeah. Yeah. Papa Barkley, that's what we use. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter what they bring out, patch, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm buying it. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally. And, and, it, and that's like, I'm still experimenting with all of them. I'm saying I want to try them all, but I've already picked some brands. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and part of the problem is that, um, that I think people are missing, and I think from a business perspective they're missing, is that we, if, if there's a premium, mm -hmm. then what you're doing is you're, you are... Uh, kind of keeping the market for more affluent individuals, right. Right? right? And most people in this country are not affluent. And so, same thing with product development. People are creating so many products, they're all trying to go for that premium, high-end right. consumer. Right. Well, guess what? Most consumers aren't premium, high-end consumers. Right. So, maybe it's not as flashy, but there's probably a whole lot more money to be made. Uh, reaching that reaching that that the, those other strata of, right. of consumers who right now are for the most part not going to the dispensaries because of the added cost and so we've got to figure out our regulatory schemes and our tax schemes right. and the product development uh, in a way to figure out how to get a low-cost product uh, to the many cannabis consumers who right now are still uh, you know going to the, the, the person on the corner yep. And you know we've seen a huge rise in that since it became legal in the first year. Yeah. With adult cannabis, the taxes went up by about 35%, yeah. and all and of a sudden, even, everybody yeah. I knew that used to sell weed was selling it again. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's just. Right. Hey, guess what? So. What we do know is that you know in Colorado, every single year the the share of the illicit market goes down and down and down, and it's the lowest one in there. We just put out a new report, our oh, sixth goodness. edition of the state of legal marijuana markets. It's about this thick, goes super deep into all of the data and all of the trends and all the curves. And one of the things we look at is how well the market is competing with the illicit market right, right. in each state. Oh, by state by state. Yeah. So how's California doing? Uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember, but not as good as Colorado. I wouldn't think so. Because so. one of the things that they're, they, they cite is that there's a, over 50%, they say, of California cannabis actually leaves the state. Yeah, I, I, I would believe that. Yeah. You know, I, I'm one of the founding board members of the National Cannabis Industry Association and currently serve as on the board there and, you know, was there for the very first conferences and everything else. So to be out there and to see so many people and to see so many businesses that were real little legitimately in people's garages now in massive facilities with beautiful booths and 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 you know really talented professionals working for them is really it, it warms my heart to see this industry grow and and to see the policy change along with it um, because it's not just about the opportunity it's about the the social justice goals that this hopefully makes possible um, and then I would also just say, um, you know, one of the great things too is to walk past so many companies that Arcview, since we do this group with investors, you know, so many companies that we've seen raise capital through our group. In some cases, we own a stake of because they've come through Canopy, which is our accelerator uh, uh, partner, and or have won our, our winners fund, and so we own a piece that way. So I, I walk through, and it's like every third thing. It's like, oh wow, you know, they're a client of mine, or oh, you know, we own a piece of them, or they're a partner of ours. And so it's really, really um, cool to see to be able to have that much of an impact. No doubt, you have yeah. literally personally changed the industry. Thank you. Thank you so much for making time for us today. Thanks we for really me. appreciate it. That was really enlightening. And uh, we look forward to your further success. Thanks. Thanks for your help.